we built a biosphere to put living systems in. We ran it for a decade. The results were far better than I ever imagined. We are now, so we closed it. We have now opened the enlarged Creation Evidence Museum facility. We have a large chamber, weighs 92,000 pounds, it's 48 feet long, and 11 and a half inch ID diameter. We are now building the permanent biosphere. A biosphere is different from a hyperbaric chamber. A hyperbaric chamber simply adds pressure and it adds oxygen ratio. We add the pressure, appropriate pressure, oxygen ratio, carbon dioxide ratio, the humidity, the sound, the light, and a number of other parameter factors. What have been the results? We built a small one first, seven feet long, four foot diameter. We put a Cadredon contortrix and a Grotilus there. What are those? Rattlesnakes and copperheads. <laughs> we put them in. We also use the standard study um, with fruit flies. Now, these fruit flies were standard field fruit flies. And as we used them, we didn't use any exotic food. We simply put them under this context with pulsed electromagnetic energy, the pressure, the oxygen ratio, et cetera, et cetera. In the second generation, we triple the adult lifespan of the fruit flies just by having them in that context. Just by putting them in a pre-flood context as best we can interpret it. We triple the adult lifespan in the second generation, even with their damaged DNA. That's the equivalent of your living to be 200 years in age, even with your damaged DNA. Uh, but the most exotic test we ran, Bill saw those in motion, the copperheads and the rattlesnakes. Snake venom is the most complicated protein structure in biological nature. It has an average of a hundred different proteins. And they each serve a purpose, but not in the snake, but in his venom. What's it for? Well, they have a hypodermic needle uh -huh, to vaccinate you. After four weeks in the biosphere, we milked the control group and we milked the biospheric snakes. We took the venom to an independent lab in Dallas. They called me to the lab and they said, we can't believe this. They said, you've got to let us publish on this, but I have not yet permitted that to be done. They said, look, here's your control group with the gnarled spaghetti venom. But they said, look, the biospheric group of both Echidrodon, Contortrix, and Agrodalus are structured. The frayed bonds are not there, the frayed proteins. Theoretically, we have rendered them more potent, but we have rendered them non-poisonous, theoretically. We had these snakes under greater atmospheric pressure, we had them under elevated oxygen and carbon dioxide, but we had them primarily under pulsed electromagnetic energy, and we knew the exact range to put them under. That's, that's very important. We milked the snakes, took the venom back to the lab the second time, the PhD in charge of the program said, we're gonna run an electrophoresis analysis. Good. He called me the next week and said, you gotta come up here, you gotta come up here. We've got three PhDs on this and we're all stunned. He said, you have to let us publish on this. Not yet. He said, look, here's the control group, here's the biospheric group, or just one of each. He said, I ran the Western blot electrophoresis.
Okay. So there were two columns. He said, here's your control group, the control venom. Here's your biospheric venom. Watch this. He said, in this instance, comparing these directly across, same creature. He said, you have enhanced this protein expression. That's like saying you're growing a little more hair on this guy. Pretty good. He said, in this one, you have, in the biosphere, diminished this protein expression. That's like saying you've taken off his warts. Are you still with me? Protein expression. He said, look here. In this protein expression from the control, you have eliminated this in the biospheric snake. Isn't that nice? You get rid of some things you didn't want at all. But he said, this is what threw us. You have expressed a protein that is not expressed in the control venom. You know what that means? The information is already there. That new information that made him more viable or whatever did not come by an evolutionary process, but the environmental factors caused the expression of information that had to be there in the genetic code in order to be expressed. That destroys evolutionary progression. The information has to be in place to be expressed.